Thank you for joining our presentation on DeltaConf. My name is Ruben Wiersma, and this work is a collaboration with Ahmad Nazikun, Elmer Eisenman, and Klaus Hildebrand. Lots of data in our world is captured from curved surfaces. Point clouds are scanned in robotics and augmented reality. 3D models are created by artists and product designers. And doctors look at 3D data to diagnose their patients. How do we use all that data? On images, people have found convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, to be very effective. Such networks could be used, for example, to segment images. In this presentation, we seek to design similar networks, but for surfaces in 3D. On a surface, we might want to segment a shape into its parts, such as the engines and wings of an airplane. In our paper, we focus on point clouds, as they are widely available. We assume there is some surface underlying the point cloud, which is why we'll discuss surfaces in general in most of the presentation. Let's first consider why CNNs work so well on images. In CNNs, we convolve a kernel over the input and optimize the weights in this kernel. With this construction, we share weights, which is efficient. We also enforce translation invariants, meaning that we can find patterns such as vertical edges or faces no matter where they are. This makes CNNs a very good fit for image data. And we would like to have the same for surfaces. There are many localized features on a surface, such as ridges, corners, or recurring patterns. More generally, we're talking about any signal on the surface. A good example is color, but you can also think of measurements around the globe, such as temperature. We can benefit from applying local convolution-like operators on such signals. In our work, we try to create intrinsic convolutions. A clear example of this intrinsic viewpoint is computing distances on shapes. An extrinsic approach would measure the distance directly from A to B. An intrinsic approach would move along the surface, giving you a geodesic distance. Intrinsic operations are robust to isometric deformations, deformations that don't stretch or squeeze the surface. Examples are moving your fingers, your arms, or your legs. In reality, such deformations are not purely isometric, but an intrinsic convolution would be much more suited to such deformations than an extrinsic one. We also learn and apply filters in 2D instead of 3D, and we naturally skip empty space, which is more efficient. So just like CNNs fit image data, intrinsic convolutions fit curved surfaces. Let's add a complicating factor. You see these ridges, edges, and corners. They all have a certain direction. They're anisotropic. Now this can be informative, so we'd like our convolutions to be anisotropic as well. On images, it's straightforward to apply anisotropic or directional convolutions because we have a global coordinate system, the pixel grid. We could find vertical edges with a vertical edge kernel and do the same with a horizontal edge kernel. These can be combined in neural networks to construct more complex features such as corners and shapes. But notice how much we depend on a consistent reference point for concepts such as horizontal or vertical. On surfaces, we cannot guarantee a global coordinate system without stretching or distorting the surface. So if we apply anisotropic filters, we cannot consistently align them intrinsically. How do we proceed? The first way is to ignore directions. In a way, this is what some previous works do. GCN is a local graph convolution, which multiplies the same weight matrix with the features of each neighbor, and then aggregates with a sum. Point at plus plus uses the same multilayer perceptron for each point, but aggregates with a maximum. EdgeConf uses point pair features, differences along edges. This maximum difference is not isotropic, but the direction of the change is not used by the convolutions. Many works use extrinsic convolutions and create filter kernels in 3D. A well-known example is KPConf, which can also optimize the location of kernel points to fit to the surface. While these filters can be anisotropic, they're not intrinsic, so this is orthogonal to our goal. Finally, we've seen charting-based approaches. These approaches learn a kernel in 2D and apply it to the surface using the exponential map. Some approaches use rotation equivariant kernels and parallel transport to correct for unaligned coordinate systems. This exponential map used in these approaches is relatively expensive to compute, and most approaches ignore the angular distortion introduced by the mapping. In this talk, we're introducing DeltaConf, which is anisotropic and intrinsic 
working directly on the surface. In DeltaConf, we shift the focus from designing filter kernels to using operators from vector calculus, such as the Laplacian, gradient, and divergence. Such operators are coordinate independent, which in practice means that the encoding of directional information is abstracted away from the neural network. Operators have been used before in geometric deep learning. GCN uses the graph Laplacian, and EdgeConf's design is inspired by the Laplacian. DiffusionNet learns diffusion times on the surface with an eigen decomposition of the Laplacian and applies the spatial gradient. In DeltaConf, we use additional operators and connect them in different ways. For example, we retain directional information throughout the network by maintaining vector features. Let's start by introducing the operators that we're using. First, the Laplacian. This operator computes the sum of second derivatives along every coefficient. An intuitive understanding in the discrete setting is that it computes the average of a point's neighbors and then gives you the difference to that average. The Laplacian is widely used in differential equations and shape analysis, but a downside of using only this operator is that it's isotropic. Next to gradient and cogradient. The gradient represents the largest rate of change and the direction of that change as a vector at each point. The cogradient is a 90 degree rotation of this gradient which in practice allows us to rotate vectors. On surfaces, gradients can be fully represented as tangent vectors. Divergence and curl are commonly used to analyze vector fields. Divergence measures how much a vector field points out of a point, and curl measures how much a vector field rotates around a point. We use these operators in a neural network to compute local features. We start with the observation that each operator either outputs scalars or vectors gradient maps from scalars to vectors, and divergence from vectors to scalars. Cogradient and curl are simply 90 degree rotations of gradient and divergence. For the Laplacian, we have to compute two derivatives, which means we go there and back again. For scalars, we go to vectors with gradient and back again with divergence. For vectors, we go to scalars with divergence and curl and back again with gradient and cogradient. In our neural networks, we'll separate scalars and vectors into two streams that run throughout the network and connect them with these operators. DeltaConf can be used as a layer in a neural network and you would typically stack multiple layers of DeltaConf after each other. The input to each layer is a set of features for each point. In human terms, these features could be described as edge likeness or cornerness, but the neural network derives the features most useful for the task at hand. In the vector stream, each point has multiple vector features. These features don't only have a strength, but also a direction. We choose to encode vector features by their coordinates in the tangent plane. I hope this triggers something in you. We just explained that local coordinate systems are not aligned. In fact, we could pick any rotation around the normal. However, each vector feature is the result of coordinate independent operators. Gradient and divergence analyze functions and vector fields. They don't depend on the coordinate system that is used to encode their input or output. We could pick any coordinate system we like. Next, computing features. First of all, we can learn per point features using multilayer perceptrons. We take a weighted sum of the input features, apply a nonlinearity, and repeat for a number of layers. For vectors, this process is similar. Take a weighted sum of the vectors, apply a nonlinearity to the vector norms, and then repeat. Now note that each of these operations acts on vectors as a whole and does not depend on the coordinate system. Next, computing local features. We connect from the scalar stream to the vector stream with gradient and cogradient, back to the scalar stream with divergence, curl, and the vector norm, and finally we add Laplacians inside the streams. DeltaConf combines and composes the operators by concatenating their outputs along the feature dimension and feeding them to multilayer perceptrons. We use maximum aggregation instead of Laplacian in the scalar streams, as this is a very effective analogy of Laplacians for learning on point clouds, as demonstrated by PointNet++ and EdgeConf. What did we achieve? First, we met our goal of creating directional filters. A good way to illustrate this is with anisotropic diffusion as proposed by Perona and Malik. Here, the change of a function over time is described with the gradient, a nonlinearity applied to the gradient vector norms, and divergence. We can solve this equation by integrating over time. 
As the number of time steps increases, the signal is diffused along certain directions. The result is that edges are preserved. Delta-conf has all the building blocks necessary to perform an isotropic diffusion. Gradient, a nonlinearity on vector norms, and divergence. We can demonstrate this nicely on an image. We set up a simple ResNet and feed the unfiltered image as input. The network is then optimized to output the target image, which was created with 20 anisotropic diffusion steps. A network with DeltaConf can match the result, where previous point cloud and image convolutions struggle. Note that even image CNNs don't achieve the desired effect. We think this has multiple causes. For one, Peronomalic requires a nonlinearity and vector norms, which can be difficult for the image CNN to derive. Combine this with the fact that the number of sharp edges is relatively low compared to the blurred areas. It could be simpler for the CNN to optimize to a blurring filter. Now finally, a part that I'm very excited about. DeltaConf builds on foundations of differential geometry. Therefore, it inherits a lot of nice properties for curved surfaces. All operators are intrinsic. They're also all coordinate independent. All the operators are generalizable to other manifolds, such as hyperbolic spaces and higher dimensions, and we already have nice discretizations. In this paper, we show that DeltaConf works effectively on images and point clouds. Let's take DeltaConf for a spin. We start with the architecture proposed in DGCNN, the network around EdgeConf. Each convolution is replaced with the operations in DeltaConf. The result is a very simple architecture with three to four convolution layers in a single scale. You might notice that we use 3D coordinates as input to the network. We use such extrinsic features as input to compare with other works that use 3D positions. It would be possible to use intrinsic features as input, which would make the entire pipeline fully intrinsic and rotation invariant. In our implementation, we use moving least squares to compute gradient and divergence on a point cloud. We fit a quadratic polynomial to a small patch of points and then take its derivative. The operators are regularized and normalized to be robust to noise and sparse regions. The operators are also easy to use. We can reuse gradient and divergence for co-gradient and curl, and the operations are applied through efficient sparse matrix multiplication. You can find our code on GitHub. Of course, we are curious how DeltaConf compared to recent state-of-the-art approaches on classification with ModelNet40 and segmentation on ShapeNet. Often these networks use more complex network architectures and techniques such as self-attention. Even then, DeltaConf is on par or better than the state-of-the-art, showing that it pays off to be aware of geometric constraints. We also tested on more challenging data. Scan object NN is a classification task with objects from multiple scan room datasets. It includes noise and background points, and there are variants of the data with translated and rotated bounding boxes. Even on the most difficult variant, we see a large improvement over previous works. Next, we investigated how much we actually benefit from directional information. We first tested three networks that don't use directional information in their convolutions. The Laplace Beltrami operator, GCN, and a network with maximum aggregation. Then we test two variants, one where we just increase the number of parameters and one where we add the vector stream. On both tasks and for every network, the vector stream increases the accuracy. Finally, we evaluated the runtime of DeltaConf compared to a very similar, seemingly simpler operation, EdgeConf. To our surprise, DeltaConf was actually much faster than EdgeConf. Note that we don't use any of the dynamic graph components from DGCNN. Now look, for example, at the comparison of the backward pass, a 30 times improvement. The reason for this is simple. DeltaConf computes directional features at each point instead of each edge. If you have 20 edges per point, EdgeConf applies the multilayer perceptron 20 times for each point. This is hard to scale up to larger point clouds with more points per neighborhood. Concluding. We saw that it's difficult to design convolutions that are both intrinsic and anisotropic. DeltaConf combines and composes geometric operators, resulting in a convolution that is intrinsic and anisotropic, which gives us improved performance. It is easy to use and efficient and builds on foundational properties and knowledge from analysis and geometry. And we hope that it inspires more work that connects these fields. You can try DeltaConf for yourself by downloading the source code on GitHub or installing the package using pip. I'm excited to see what you'll do with it 
and I want to thank you for your attention.